Hello, my friends, this is Russ Warner. It's been a week since we launched Verify, and we've had a number of questions come up from service providers like you. Um, I wanted to give you an overview and answer a bunch of questions. Hopefully this will help you get moving forward in terms of um, using and demonstrating and selling Verify. You know, if you watch the presentation, it's just a simple, fast, and highly accurate way of administering truth verification tests. We do not intend for it to cannibalize iDetect or iDetect Plus. It's just a different way to carry out testing. I'll show you in a moment a comparison of features between the products, and you'll see uh, perhaps in under which circumstances Verify might be used. So the reason we came out with Verify or developed it, it took a couple of years to, is that we had complaints in the past of customers requiring specialized equipment like the eye detect station. An examiner had to be present or a proctor. Testing time, even though we lowered the, the testing time from polygraph standards to 15 minutes for a DLC test, customers still want a shorter test, of course. In terms of keeping private information confidential, you know that any data shared by the test proctor when initiating a test goes to our server. And there are governments around the world who don't want their data on a US server. And you can't test anywhere at any time. You have to schedule it, get two people together, start the test. So for all of these reasons, we developed Verify. I do want to mention very quickly the use cases. Most of you, many of you do pre-employment screening. Some of you do investigations. Some of you do infidelity tests. I want to just uh, get you thinking about some different use cases. You see the list here in terms of employment, pre-employment screening. Pre-screening of pre-employment screening. If there's a need to screen lots and lots of people and the organization doesn't want to pay for them to come to a location, then Verify would be a great way to pre-screen for, for hiring. You could also do ongoing employee monitoring, especially if there's an, um, an incident, there's an issue, or simply to establish a pattern of um, a pattern behavior by testing regularly, you increase the uh, likelihood that employees will act with integrity. Investigations, of course, I'm not sure I would use this for criminal cases, but you could if you needed to test a, a lot of people. We've talked to an organization where 400 employees were in one location at one time and something goes missing. Testing 400 people would take a long time. So that would be another use case. In terms of identity, you can verify the identity of someone, especially for maybe a, a new a new account at a bank. Um, access control into a building. You could also validate an online profile like on a dating site, validate that the person who indicated all of those different demographic characteristics that they have are actually true. Uh, you could even tie the uh, the results to a biometric because during the test, we will take a photo of the examinee. And if you have development tools, you have programmers on staff, you could then tie that to a, let's say, a, an access control app and bu uh, bundle verify with other solutions. And I'll talk about that in a second, a, a little bit more. In terms of credit risk analysis, we do have customers outside the US who use uh, iDetect to verify the uh, willingness of a of an examinee to pay their bills or the past history of them paying their bills. Um, so in terms of establishing lines of credit or payment authorization, um, giving someone authorization in an organization where they do wire transfers, for example, to ensure that they're not siphoning funds to other locations. In terms of claims, insurance claims, we have a large customer outside the US who uses iDetect to validate claims made about injuries on the job. Well, you could use Verify to do that and not have to bring someone from the outskirts from a regional area to a central location to do testing. Um, online profile, I think I just mentioned that, I, but you could use it here for like a professional profile, a plumber, electrician, who claims to have certain licenses or certain levels of education. Compliance, compliance with rules, with policies or with treatment programs, rules and policies uh, of parole and probation. 
So these are all a number of different potential use cases. Any, any other use cases you've thought of where I detect may not work and you need something faster. Here's a simple, well, not too simple. Here's a table that compares Verify, iDetect, and iDetect Plus. You look at test time, Verify is a shorter test. In terms of hardware, you just use the cell phone, not an iDetect station. It has lower, lower accuracy because the test is much shorter. We will work on in the future increasing the accuracy, and it might, it might entail increasing the testing time by a minute or two, as an example. In terms of available languages, you can run a Verify test using the app in English for any language the test is written in, any language that the phone supports, because there are, when you set up the configuration of your phone, you set up the voice that's used for the spoken content. Whatever the phone supports, we support because the phone supports text to speech. Who can proctor the test? Well, in the case of Verify, you don't need a proctor. You could use one, but you don't need one. Where are the results? You can get them in your the, the dashboard that you've always used. If you're an integrator or programmer, you could develop your own dashboard and show the results somewhere else. In terms of reading, in the case of Verify, no one reads anything. The tests are delivered audibly. The examinee answers verbally. You cannot wear eyeglasses during the test because it causes reflection. Um, you can use contacts. And in terms of responding to questions, no mouse is used with Verify, of course. It's verbal, and that's a comparison of features, I'll say, between the three products. Now, how do you take a test? If you've downloaded the app from the App Store, you download it, you open it up and say, oh, what's next? I don't get it. In order to take a test, the person who's going to take the test needs to have a test link sent to them by text, by email, by WhatsApp. You have to have a link. You click on the link. The link takes you to the App Store if you don't have the app. If you do have the app, the link takes you right to the app and loads the test. You could have a proctor, use a standardized phone, preload a bunch of test links for people who are going to visit the office, and proctor tests as well. But a link is required. Without a link, no test. In order to create links, you need access to the dashboard. We can enable your access to the dashboard. Uh, Page can do that. And once you have access to the dashboard, you can go in and create links. You can manage the creation of links, manage um, the status of links if they're if they've been used or not and then manage the test reports that come in in the case of verify we have to create a new id and pin for you and at the sub account level that's just how the system is working at this point i'm sure it will change in the future but that's what you need a new id and pin at the sub account level after we enable that sub account to access verify and once you have access you can go in and start doing what i just said there have been a lot of questions about the SDK, a software developer kit. Why should we use an SDK? Is it required? What is an SDK? An SDK is just a bunch of programming calls and codes for programmers or integrators who want to build an add-on solution to Verify, or they want to create their own solution using Verify in their own dashboard, in their own system. You don't have to do that. So if you do need an SDK, and that's typically to automate processes, to make them programmatic or automated, and for high volumes of tests. Integrators and others who, who develop software services will use an SDK. In the case of uh, someone who just wants to run a test occasionally, you can use the dashboard. You can create and manage your test links and look at the reports. If you're doing low volumes of tests, it works great. Um, you don't need to integrate any software. You can just basically start using Verify tomorrow. Well, how much does it cost? Well, let me explain one more thing. I'll get to cost. This the demo that we used during our connect meeting. This website that you're seeing a, a screenshot of. We developed this website and all of the links to the capabilities on the website using our own APIs or our own software developer kit. And on this website in the demo, it, it simulated uh, filling out a job application or filling out a new account application. That information was gathered and a link was created automatically and automatically sent to me during the demo on my phone, and then I took the test. When the test was completed, the results can come back to this dashboard and you can show the results in a different way than we currently um, show, the, show the results in the report. So what are the costs? If you just want to run iDetect, sorry, verify test, 
Just like I detect, you need a test license. If you're going to do software development, you need a software developer kit. You need to pay the first year of uh, maintenance, upgrades, and tech support. And then that annual fee can be reduced, but it, there is an annual fee for support. You don't have to pay for any Google Play or Apple App Store fees. There's none of that. So really, you can just get started today running tests by selling or buying test licenses, creating links and sending them to people who need to take a test. When, once we enable the your account in the dashboard at the sub-account level, and you've created a new a new ID and PIN for yourself for that sub-account, you'll log in and you'll see, as you see here on the screen, a new tab appears next to iDetect. I will try to highlight that here, right there. And that's where you begin to create the test links, manage the test links, look at test reports. The question comes up with, well, how can I demonstrate the product? You'll either, you'll either use a demo test or a number test. They both have a different purpose. So which one would you use? In the case of um, a number test, number tests prove accuracy, right? That's why we use number test. Pick a number, lie about the number. Number tests work because we, we have ground truth. We know who is lying. In fact, everyone is lying who takes the number test, generally speaking. So it's a great way to show uh, accuracy in a short period of time using a, a topic that won't incriminate someone um, and get them in trouble. It's a number, right? In the case of someone who says, I want to know what the experience is like to take the test. Now, when you take a number test, you'll have the experience too. But if someone just wants the experience very quickly, you can use the demo test. It provides a short, brief experience. The test is not scored. No one gets in trouble for failing. Um, we, there's no ground truth when you do a demo test. It doesn't matter because that's not the purpose of the test. The examinee will experience how to hold the phone and how to answer questions and sit in a quiet room and all the typical stuff you'd, you'd require for a test taker. Wi-Fi is required or your carrier network. We recommend Wi-Fi because in most cases it's a higher bandwidth. You cannot run a test offline. You must have Wi-Fi or your carrier network. That's a requirement. After clicking a link that is sent to you, the test immediately downloads to the app immediately, and it's very quick. Person takes the test. Let's say the person decides, I don't want to take the test. As long as they stop or uh, abort the test before the end of the practice test, no issue. They can come back later and click on the same link and, use, and, and take the test again. Once the test, the real test begins, if someone aborts the test for any reason, they will have to get a new link from you. We anticipate that this could be a countermeasure, aborting the test, pretending like it didn't work, um, but the examinee will need a new link if they start the test and abort prematurely. If the test is finished and it's uploading the data to the server in the cloud and that signal is disrupted, once the signal resumes, it will attempt to continue to upload the test data. So it's, got a, it's, it's a smart upload feature. We do have training for Verify next week, uh, March 21st through 23rd. We're offering training on Verify. If you go to the Converis.com slash training page on our website, you can see this. You can see that it's the second day of the training that we're doing Verify training. So if you only want to see Verify training and there's test proctor training and administrator training for Verify and where we will create certification tests for both of those courses, all of the resources that we create during training we will put on our typical website for training resources, which is converis.com slash videos. That's where you'll go to get the training resources. If asked about research, Verify and iDetect function the same way. One system uses an eye tracker and one system uses a, a cell phone. But in reality, the analysis of data, the tracking of data, the algorithm basically is, is modeled the same way for both systems. It's just a different eye tracker in the case of Verify. But we are doing ongoing lab studies. We've, we're always doing lab studies, always trying to improve the algorithm. If you want to hear more about the specific research done on Verify, go to uh, converis.com slash connect23. And there you can see the presentation that Mark Handler did to summarize the research that Dr. Kircher has done on Verify. So we adjust the algorithm based on the new protocol. The protocol is different because people answer questions. They hear them audibly. The test is shorter. 
is uh, the camera slightly different, but essentially it's going to work similarly to to eye detect. Suitability, what about eye problems, eye conditions, eye diseases? The same suitability applies to verify. So if you want, you can go to converis.com slash videos and look up the suitability training. And during that training, it will show you a list of eye dise diseases or conditions that might be impacted during a test. What about liability? Someone, uh, you, would, you send a link to someone who takes an infidelity test and they commit a crime as a result of the results of the test. In our end user license agreement, which every person has to accept before they take a test, in that user end user license agreement, we've included indemnification clauses, a health waiver, disclaimers, and so on. That's all to mitigate risk that might happen if someone gets mad at the test results. If you want to read the EULA, go to converse.com slash EULA. The general EULA is there for eye detect and the verify EULA is there. We support all sorts of different types of phones. Uh, the chart at the bottom in dark blue shows the percentage of Android and iPhone users around the world. 72% of the, of the world population uses Android. As long as the Android phone has at least a, a camera with 750 pixels, it would be OK, and that would be an old phone. The newer the phone, the better. In the case of iPhone, uh, at least an iPhone 5S on the new iOS 12. Some of you may have heard about a company called, I don't, don't know how to say it, Xiaomi. Xiaomi, maybe, in Chinese. Um, there was a, an article that talked about that company receiving a patent for a new product that is going to use um, a mobile phone technology to do lie detection. Well, I, I'm here to tell you there, there's no product. You can't buy that today. It doesn't exist. It's going to be a specialized camera with telephoto lens which you attach to a phone probably, and it needs a storage device, so a very different configuration than Verify. Anytime you need specialized hardware, that makes the product less viable. No one knows about the accuracy of the test because it doesn't exist. We don't know how the test is carried out either. We filed in the US patents for this mobile eye detection, eye-based lie detector, so mobile eye-based lie detector. We filed US patents a couple of years ago and we checked and found that Xiaomi also filed for patents, but after we did. So that's that's good news. If you see a patent mentioned in recent news articles, it's a Chinese patent and China law, I believe, works the same way as US law. The first person to file wins and we filed first. We're not too worried about this product at this point. Hopefully you're not either. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. We appreciate your time, your attention, your interest in Verify. And we're here to help you market it and start making money from it. Thanks.